every House member will be up for re-election in November, but also a number of critical Senate races taking place. But it's not just national elections. You also have state elections, county elections, DAs will be on the ballot. And so the question is, what will black voters do? How important is this? What we've seen take place, frank, frankly, over this year, are African Americans saying they're not waiting for a party, not waiting for candidates, really folks organizing and mobilizing themselves because they understand in the age of Trump how critical this midterm election is. If you think back to 2010, 2014, there was a huge drop off in folks voting than who voted for President Barack Obama in 2008 and 2012. African Americans want to make sure that never happens again. So you're seeing a level of energy you have not seen in quite some time. This really is not even a question of Democrats or Republicans, even though there's a lot more enthusiasm on the Democrat side than you see on the Republican side. And so who is going to be a critical voting block? Black women. In 2016, 94% of black women voted for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump. 85% of black men voted for Hillary Clinton. That was a nine-point gap that existed between black men and black women when it came to voting for Hillary Clinton. We saw what happened in Alabama where Doug Jones upset, uh, upset uh, 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 Roy uh, Moore there. Again, black women made a huge difference, folks who were on the ground mobilizing, but you had African-American men voting as well. And so what we're seeing all across the country, this tremendous grassroots organic energy taking place where African-Americans are saying we're in control of our own destiny. Here today at the convention center, just a few uh, hours ago, a group of black women met. There's an annual report that is released between the National Coalition of Black Civic Participation and Essence Magazine that details the thoughts and perspectives of black black women. We're going to talk about that particular report uh, with Melanie Campbell, of course, uh, who is uh, over the organization. Uh, but first, uh, Avis Jones DeWeaver, you often see her on our show. She gave a presentation about the report earlier today. We wanted you to actually see that. So here is uh, Avis presentation a little bit earlier. Uh, black women are really the decision makers. We are the deciders of the political future of this nation. We've shown our power over and over again, as was referenced with Alabama, as was referenced with Ayanna Presley, and so many other examples, and we will continue to do so. And that's why we're so excited to continue our partnership with Essence Magazine to really be able to mind uh, the political intentions and opinions and preferences, policy preferences of black women. Uh, this is our fourth year of doing so. Uh, and so today we're going to sort of delve a little bit deep into this year's findings as well as provide you a little bit of a comparative analysis as it relates to how our findings actually parsed out in previous years. Just to tell you a little bit about the sample, uh, the sample is based on uh, Essence readers. So we used an Essence panel survey. Over 500 women from across the country answered these questions and have been doing so for the past four years. And uh, I'm excited to be able to share with you their political opinions. All right. I have some bullet points here that give you the sort of the longitudinal analysis, but instead of going through the bullet points, I'm going to just sort of give you the context as I show you the graphs that show you the outcomes, okay? So first, as it relates to black women as activists. Now, we know that black women have changed the world, and we continue to do so. And we do that in large part through our activism. Uh, our survey uh, has shown that to be the case uh, again. Uh, we see that black women are still very active in their communities. And in fact, especially young black women are increasing their activism. We've seen a huge jump in the number of young black women who are saying they are activists as compared to last year, uh, over a 10% jump in fact. And so at roughly a 10% jump in fact. And as always, our more mature sisters, we are always out there, almost two thirds of us, uh, active as always. Now, as it relates to how we actually uh, have our activism sort of play out in the real world, we are active in various ways. Um, overall, we are um, community organizers. Uh, in particular, we find that uh, we are community organizers. That's basically the main, main way in which we show our activism. Besides that, we're very active in our faith communities. Uh, and what I find very interesting when I look at this chart is, once again, when you disaggregate by age, we find that at every different area of activism, actually the young women are outperforming the more seasoned women, with the one exception of activism around local schools. And that makes sense, because one would think that a more seasoned woman might be looking to advocate for her child who's in school at that moment, right? Uh, now, this next one is probably, oops, 
I'm sorry, guys, I should have advanced the slide. There we go. Now, this next one is really, I think, probably one of the most interesting charts in this entire survey, uh, particularly when you look at it from a longitudinal form. All right, this is, these are the responses to a question that we asked around, you know, how do you feel about which political party best represents your interest as a black woman? Now, over the years, we've seen these numbers shift. And in fact, last year, we saw a huge drop in the number of black women who said that the Democratic Party best represented their interests. We saw a full 11-point drop uh, in the number of black women who said that, that the Democratic Party best represented their interests. Uh, now, what's interesting with that uh, is given everything that we know about the importance of black women uh, for the Democratic Party, one would think that over the course of the past year there would be a lot of different efforts. And I happen to know there have been a lot of different efforts to try to woo black women. There could be more. And definitely as it relates to the findings that we see from this year's survey, there definitely needs to be more. Because not only have the Democratic Party not rebounded in the minds of black women, actually the percentage of black women who believe that the Democrats represent their interests has further slid back another point this year. And what's really interesting as well is the percentage of black women who say that the Republican Party best represents their, act their best interests actually has gone up slightly. Uh, to 2% this year, whereas in every previous year in which we've had this survey, it was steady at 1%. Yeah. I think another very interesting finding from this particular chart is that fully one out of five, a little bit more than one out of five black women say that no political party best represents their interest. And once again, that has increased slightly over last year. So when I take the findings in totem here, what it's telling me is that one cannot take the black woman's vote for granted that we need not to only just focus on getting out the vote campaigns, we need to focus on persuasion campaigns. We need to make sure that black women understand why it's important to vote for a particular party. In other words, our vote needs to be earned. And actually, I think that's a good thing, all right? Um, when we take a look at what specific issues are most important to black women, we've seen some significant shifts here over the years. In every previous year of this survey, black women had said that affordable health care was their most critical issue. This year, that fell all the way down to fourth on our list of priorities. Okay? The number one issue, according to black women this year, is the rise in hate crimes and racism. And one would say, you know, I'm not really surprised uh, because we understand how this culture has shifted given the new leadership. Uh, we see that there is a, a sort of a, a, a coarseness to our culture, an extremely sort of uh, a record level increase in terms of hate crimes in our country. And women are showing that in terms of what they feel is the most important thing that's impacting them at this moment. Secondly, uh, is their concerns around the need for criminal justice and police reform. And thirdly, the need for gun violence and gun safety action. Now, another very interesting thing about these findings is that if you further disaggregate by age, you see some slightly different priorities. So for example, uh, older women are more likely than younger women to say that racism and hate crimes is the most important factor to them, whereas younger women are more likely than older women to say that criminal justice and policing reform is the most important factor to them. So you know, it really kind of makes sense, doesn't it? 